DJI just came out with a new video transmission system tailored for filmmakers, from solo creators like myself to teams working on small to medium sized sets, and here's everything you need to know. DJI is sponsoring this video for me to give you guys an overview of the brand new product, but more excitingly, we'll be giving away one of the new DJI SDR video transmission kits at the end of this video, so make sure to stick around to find out how to enter. This is the all new DJI SDR transmission system, a video transmission solution that's both beginner friendly and scalable to a small to medium sized production. These transmitters are designed for long range transmission with high object penetration capabilities. Video quality wise, you'll be getting up to a 1080p 60 frames per second feed with up to a 20 megabit per second bit rate. So what is SDR? SDR stands for Software Defined Radio, which is a radio communication system that utilizes software over just analog hardware. According to DJI, this SDR technology allows for automatic frequency hopping, which creates a more reliable connection in situations where you don't have direct line of sight between the transmitter and receiver, as well as better performance in complex environments with potential signal interference. All right, let's hook this up and test it out. The default and most stable configuration is going to be the control mode, which lets you pair up to two receivers to the transmitter. On the camera end, it's as simple as mounting it onto your rig somewhere, throwing an MPF battery on, and connecting the HDMI or SDI cable to your camera. Similar story on the receiver end. Mount it to your monitor, toss a battery on, plug in the HDMI or SDI cable. And if you just wanted a simple wireless monitoring solution with strong performance, this is as far as you would need to go. Now you have a wireless feed of what your camera sees. But it gets better. Let's say you don't have a camera monitor. You can actually use a phone or tablet you already own with a USB-C port to connect to the receiver directly. Then you can just use the DJI Ronin app to turn your phone or tablet into a monitor with monitoring features like focus peaking, LUT preview, grids, and more. Or maybe you have a really large team and for some reason everybody needs a view of the camera feed. Well, then there's broadcast mode. By sacrificing a bit of range and performance in the process, it lets you connect an unlimited number of receivers. And if you just needed a quick reference monitor but you didn't have a spare receiver on you, then you can use this Wi-Fi connection mode with this handy little QR code to monitor your footage. This is great if you don't have a spare monitor on a client shoot but the client wants to be able to look at the footage without hovering over your shoulders. So one of my first questions when I got this product was, how's the latency? Being a wireless video transmission system, of course there's gonna be some level of latency. And when used in the control mode configuration, going from transmitter to receiver, you're gonna get about an 80 millisecond delay. In the Wi-Fi mode, there's gonna be a little bit more delay, but again, still reasonable at about a 110 millisecond delay. And then that brings me to my next question, what about the range? What's the max transmission distance on this system? Well, DJI claims to have a max transmission range of three kilometers or nearly two miles of range. Of course, this is gonna be in absolutely optimal conditions with little to no interference and a clear line of sight. Now, of course, I did run my own test to see how this product works in the real world, and here's what I got. In an indoor environment with the camera transmitting on the other side of my house about 50 feet away with about three walls between the transmitter and receiver, I had a strong signal connection. In a mixed environment where the camera stayed inside my office while I walked out into the neighborhood, I got about 100 feet away before the signal started dropping and then completely cut out by about 150 feet. In an outdoor environment with the camera sitting inside my car while I walked about 1,000 feet away with clear line of sight to the car, I had full strength connection and probably could have just kept going. And in another outdoor environment while we were in a parking lot, the camera was in the car and Annette was driving away from me. In that scenario, I had a pretty strong connection for up to about 800 feet with tons of cars and objects between the transmitter and the receiver, and it only cut out when she turned around behind a building. All right, let's switch gears real quick for a second to talk about the DJI ecosystem. The transmitter includes a gimbal adapter mount that works with the DJI RS4 Pro, RS4, and RS3 Pro. With this adapter, you can mount the transmitter to the underside of the camera carriage on your gimbal, and you can then power it with a USB-C cable directly from the gimbal. And from there, you can attach your phone onto your gimbal using a phone mount, and now you'd have a Wi-Fi based lightweight compact camera monitor while you're flying a gimbal. All right, let's move on to the build quality of the system. It looks Looks like DJI went into this product with the goal of making this transmission system as compact and lightweight as possible. Weighing in at just 145 grams and thanks to the foldable antennas, transporting and throwing these on your rigs is a breeze. On the units, you'll find four foldable antennae. On the sides, you'll find an HDMI input-output port, an SDI input-output port, a power switch, a linking button, a USB-C port for firmware updates that can also be used to connect the receiver to a mobile device, a USB-C port to power the unit, and a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack that you can use for real-time two-way communication between the units in control mode, which I'll talk about later. 
On the back, you'll find an NPF battery slot to power the unit. On the bottom, you'll find a quarter 20 hole to mount the unit. And on the front, you'll find a touch screen. On the touch screen of the transmitter, you'll have access to information about the device like battery level, video signal input status, broadcast mode status, frequency information, Wi-Fi status, control mode status, and the video transmission signal quality. On the touch screen of the receiver, it'll be slightly different with battery level, video transmission signal quality, channel signal quality indicated by a green, yellow, or red dot, the video specs like resolution and frame rate, video transmission bit rate, and control labeling. You can also swipe down from the top of the touch screen to access the menu, which will include the ability to change settings, including enabling Wi-Fi mode or broadcast mode, fan speed settings, and more. Also, here's a feature that was just thrown into the product that's kind of just like a nice bonus to have. Like I said earlier, there's a 3.5 millimeter audio jack that you can plug a headset into on both the transmitter and receiver. So along with the fact that you don't technically need a camera monitor to run the system because you could just use like a phone or a tablet as the monitoring screen, you can also use these in place of a wireless intercom system if your budget's tight. All right, so that was a lot of information. That all sounds cool, but how much do these cost? If you're looking to pick up the system, it's gonna run you about $549 for the transmitter and receiver combo, which will include one transmitter, one receiver, a transmitter camera mounting plate, and a transmitter gimbal mounting plate to pair with a DJI RS4 Pro, RS4, or RS3 Pro. You can also purchase the transmitters and receivers separately, along with some accessories depending on the setup you plan to use. If you're interested in checking out the DJI SDR transmission system, I'll have links in the description down below. All right, you made it to the end, so let's talk about the giveaway. We're gonna be giving away a DJI SDR transmission combo kit along with the phone holder and tablet holder accessories. All you need to do is leave a comment down below on what you would use these for and make sure to leave your Instagram handle in your comment so I can find you if you win. And I'll be selecting winners next Friday, which is August 2nd, so keep an eye out for that. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed for more content. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Peace.